Hey guys, Steve here. Today we're going to be checking out the terrible French Destroyer. There's Violet on the screen, and we're going to be doing our best, uh, what's his name, Ian Malcolm impression, Jeff Goldblum. Uh, but note, slot 3 on the ship, concealment mod, incoming dispersion. Slot 4 on Vian, incoming dispersion. Camo on the ship, incoming dispersion. And the Vian inspiration, incoming dispersion. So we got four things making it harder for us, for enemies to hit this ship with their guns, you know, lowering the percentage chance that those shells are gonna fly true at us and we got really wicked speed especially with that blue inspiration on there uh t top speed on this 47.7 without the engine boost and i think uh i think we hit over 51 with the engine boost engaged at this point at some point in time in this game so those two factors kind of combined we go with that uh, jurassic park you know waving the flare around t trying to distract people uh, that's the play style I like with the French destroyers. Other, you know, you can. There's a few different builds that work, like the oh boy no build, really focusing on the torps, the concealment. That can be dangerous as well. The torpedoes hit really hard. I think they're usually the hardest hitting torps at the tier, and it, you can get the concealment down. Mine's going to be 6.1, and we're going to see that's. I'm actually going to going to forget that just how high it is at one point in this game. But here we're going to be talking about French destroyer tips in general and maybe some you know just applicable to all destroyers but here we're getting on a now you can see as we got on there the other guy got on there now we know i mean i'm in a fast destroyer and i wasn't lollygagging i got right to it went to the cap so it's really only a destroyer that could potentially be on there we also got a nagato and a fuso spotted north of the cap those are the guys that spawned on that western flank so we know for a fact that there's a destroyer usually if there's a destroyer on that far side of the island They'll pull forward through that gap, trying to get torpedoes off into our direction. And uh, if they do that, those torps that we launch might uh, hit them. And then note here, the flipping around and launching the follow-up salvo. That's French destroyer play. When you're playing against these things, you got to understand you're going to get torpedoes in waves like that. Especially if they're all launched at you, you might uh, dodge that first set of six. And then about ten seconds or so later, you're going to get a follow-up three. Now, these Tier 6 and Tier 7 French Destroyers, they got one launcher that goes off both sides of the ship and then one launcher dedicated to each side, right and left side. So, typical uh, French Destroyer pattern. We're still on the cap here, still waiting for the ship, uh, the Destroyer to pop up. Now, the Nagato's getting pretty close, and like I noted, we're about to uh, get spotted by this guy. But if the destroyer popped up and it ends up being a fabuki if he pops up and spots us and this nagato's that close to us that's pretty dangerous so this is already kind of high risk but now as we back up here we're going to go ahead and get spotted immediately you know gun it forward and then pop the speed boost and away we go and this is going to be you know we're a little close for comfort here the nagato should be able to hit us if he wanted to there but he was shooting off the other side of the ship and we're just going to chime in with the guns here now usually I kind of criticize destroyers that are just going to open up on battleships and try and gun them down. But that's not what I'm doing here. I got battleship and cruiser on my team versus two battleships and then two support ships coming over here and the destroyer capping. So we're in a 5v3 overload. Uh, we got one ship sitting in our base and then they got a 3v4 or 3v5, whatever it is, on the eastern side. So all we're trying to do is slow these guys down here cause as much damage make this as difficult as possible they already got a which is problematic but if we can tie these guys up over here while our strong side on the east clears things up over there then they can push into the base they can push into the middle of the map and create crossfire so whenever you're on the weak side uh you want to just kind of slow them down as best you can and here no we're just kind of playing with the throttle we put our hands on the throttle knob and jerk it around aggressively back and forth until uh, something happens and we can get away with that because they're not shooting at us if these guys are training their guns at us pulling the trigger then we're not going to be stopping like this necessarily but we'd probably just be running it at max speed and then trying to dodge shots but again you know we're getting decent damage just shy of 20k here gunning but if it's me versus the nagato and he's actually shooting at me and this is all the damage i've done to him in the last you know four minutes or whatever it is we've been fighting he should win that fight so this is not advisable it's not a good strategy for destroyers to try and gun down battleships in the open, especially when they're not using smoke, which we don't have here. Uh, generally not the idea, but we're just trying to assist. We're going to chip in with the damage whenever possible. And ideally, I'd like these guys to get sick of what's going on here 
And as you can see, the Pensacola took a shot at us, so we go ahead and move forward away from him. But I want these guys distracted by me, okay? Now, we want to still play our destroyer roles, capture bases, counter destroyers, all that sort of stuff. But kind of an added French role is the distraction factor. And same with the Russians, at least how I approach both of those destroyer lines. Kind of the same idea. Keep the ships at the max range. And you can see on the map there, I'm keeping them towards the end of my firing range. So that if we see those guys shoot at us, we got time to react. It's going to be a hard shot for those guys to hit. Again, we got the incoming dispersion. We got the speed. And we're putting some distance between us. All that's going to make them... It's going to force them to say, okay, do I really want to take that shot? And a lot of players, keep in mind, aren't that comfortable shooting destroyers. So... Like these guys, they're just going to say, okay, well, I can hit a battleship at least sometimes, so I'm just going to keep shooting at them. Meanwhile, you know, we got 26k. Is that game-changing? No. It's not really actually that effective in this case, but it is what it is. I'm just trying to do what we can do over here. They've sunk our support ships. Now what are we going to do? We're going to bum rush them? We're going to suicide torp them? No. No, we're going to try and run through a maybe cap it. We'll see. Probably not very likely. They're probably turning around right now. We'll find out here in a moment. But if we can at least stop the accrual of points and make them say to themselves, okay, there's a destroyer on A, how are we going to deal with this? You know, force them to continue to look at us. Because right now, look at the east side of the map. They're not quite resolved. They haven't resolved the situation over there yet, but they're winning. They got two red ships left, it looks like, over there. They've We've captured C, and now we got some guys maybe thinking about getting on B, or continuing to wrap those guys up. So we just need to buy more time. We've got to slow these guys down. Oh, take some shots in coming here. And how are we getting spotted? Now we finally realize that Fabuki, he goes ahead and chimes in with the guns. All right. Definitely doesn't want to do that 1v1, but it's a 4v1. Let's see the race is on. Who can kill each other first? Knocks out the engine on our ship. Luckily, our legendary perk is the mobility with the busted engine. So we're still moving a little bit, but... Ideally, you know, this isn't ideal. We don't want all these ships shooting at us here. Limit of mobility. No smoke to disengage. So we're just going to keep gunning down here. Due to the fact that we got a nice ship lead, if we go down, we still got two destroyers. I'm fine with that. I just got to get this guy off the board. Okay, once they're out of destroyers, hopefully our other two destroyers can take control of the game and go ahead and wrap it up on score. Capture those bases, harass these battleships, whatever. But look at that. We got them. And now, yes, we're waiting for steering gears, engines to heal. We got the damage con up. Go ahead, Teeble, pop that. You're going to want to use the damage con immediately. What are you waiting for, Chief? Apparently, I'm a little bit distracted here. But we've uh, dropped spot. We've gotten, we stopped shooting the guns, let that blue ring contract. We've moved around, so the torps that the Fubuki tried to hit us with missed. Got our own salvos off. You know, we're doing a lot of stuff here, and we got out of it. And we're up to 72k damage. That's all right. I'm not too... We end up getting a fair amount of damage this game, but it's not really that consequential. What I think our impact on this game is, is tying these guys up. Because right now, they need to be reacting to the eastern side of the map. We're going to have three caps over there. That's a death sentence. Uh, but here we open up with the guns, because we saw the torps are going towards the Pensacola, and he gone! We got him with the torps. And usually I don't like... Well, it's situational. Sometimes that works, sometimes not. But if it looks like the torps are going to get in on him and he open up with the guns, the thinking is in that instance, okay, this is going to be a lot for this guy to deal with. He's getting shot. That's already uh, stressful enough for a lot of players. And then the beeping. Oh, no, we got these torps coming in. And, okay, I got to dodge the torps. I got to shoot back at that destroyer. He's shooting at me. What do I do? You know, it's an overwhelming situation. So if you can get that kind of psychological attack on him, uh, then you get lucky with the torps and take them out like that. And again, if he dodges the torps, we can just turn around, run away, stop shooting briefly, and then rinse and repeat. He's dead, though, and we're just going to go ahead and move on A. Team's got, you know, basically full control. They got one ship halfway to Mars by now. I mean, luckily we're only sending a couple guys over there to deal with him. And then a couple guys, you know, the rest of our team's kind of play in the middle of the map, which is where they remainder of the action is so we get on the base here stops the accrual of points if we can capture the base cool but that's not needed we got three to one scores wrapping up it's getting out of control for blue and again these guys are pushing in i don't want them i think it's more important for me to bog these guys down distract them and if they if they don't want to shoot at me that's fine we'll just sit here capture the base 
Uh, we're going to go ahead and switch to the AP. Even at range, we'll see some uh, fairly effective cells here. But you can see he turns his guns. And then he's like, all right, I've had enough of this terrible. He's been doing, he's been shooting me all game. I'm going to go ahead and uh, try and deal with him. And there he goes. That AP salvo, we dodged it. You know, you reset us, big deal. Not not uh, consequential at all. But that salvo could have killed a cruiser on our team, could have killed something else. And the more we're distracting these guys, and again, look on the map, we're keeping them basically at max firing range, making it very hard for him to hit us. But every time we can get him to discharge his load in our direction, well, normally we don't like that. Uh, it's not the most comfortable, at least for me. But... In this instance, we'll happily take it, take it. And that's just because, if you think about a battleship, it can basically shoot uh, 30 rounds maximum per match. And if we're getting them to shoot 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, whatever it is, if they're shooting those at us and basically missing completely, that's damage that doesn't get applied to the rest of our team. And it's basically, you know, it's beneficial. It's kind of like tanking damage by dodging it, you know. that's a, It's a different way of tanking damage, just getting them to shoot it at you rather than more vulnerable people on our team here. So, yes, the damage wound up being decent, but I kind of liked uh, this game more for the illustration of the distraction factor, which I thought we did a fairly good job of on this one. And the team as a whole did a great job. Uh, so, you know, it's we probably would have won this game even if I didn't really do anything this match but i thought we did a roll pretty well and that'll do it for that one so hopefully you guys enjoyed it if you did please hit the thumbs up new to the channel well consider subscribing we got lots of world of warships and it's coming all the time for you guys if you got questions or comments go ahead and leave them below i'd love to hear from you guys and we'll see y'all later peace